Welcome back friends. In this video tutorial, we'll be talking about the Baltimore classification scheme. And uh, we'll be talking about the different classes of viruses that are uh, designated by uh, the Baltimore classification scheme and uh, some very specific and simple property of those viruses and the importance of those viruses about those cl uh, different classes. Okay, so let's begin. <clears throat> okay, so first of all, uh, we must know an important thing that is uh, uh, for any kind of classification of viruses and all things that uh, we need to know the central dogma of biology. That means we are having a DNA and from that DNA we can prepare uh, RNA and from the mRNA we can produce proteins. And that thing is <coughs> similar for viruses also. So if, you're having, uh, if they are having DNA, they can transcribe the DNA into RNA which is containing the codon. Then they can translate that mRNA into protein products. That's the basis of uh, central dogma in case of viruses too because viruses need to produce protein for their virulence to set place. <coughs> so in this case what we can see that uh, the major goal for our understanding is to finally produce mRNA which is having the codon. So that's why I have designated here this is the mRNA. The final way the major important thing is to produce this mRNA here. And we'll be looking at different type of viruses. Some of them are having double-stranded DNA as their genetic material. Some of them are having single-stranded RNA as their genetic material. Single-stranded DNA as their genetic material. So these things will vary from different viruses. And the uh, final goal of all those viruses are to produce this mRNA uh, from whatever genetic material they are having. If they are having a double-stranded DNA, they will generally go through the process of simple transcription and they will produce mRNA. But if they are having negative stranded RNA, in that case also they need to adopt some technique to produce mRNA from that negative stranded RNA of that <coughs> virus. So they need to rely on these different techniques to produce the mRNA because once they produce the mRNA, everything will be done. Okay, so let's begin. So we'll be looking at different classes of viruses and depend upon the Baltimore classification there are seven such classes of viruses class 1 to class 7. Okay so let's begin with so among those classes we can actually majorly divide those classes in three sections one is the class containing DNA uh, as a genetic material class containing RNA as genetic material and third thing classes which carry out the process of transcription as uh, a reverse transcriptase uh, section or using a reverse transcriptase enzyme or DNA RNA intermediate. <coughs> so let's begin with the first class. So class 1 is the double stranded DNA containing viruses and they are very basic. The process of mRNA production from this double stranded DNA virus is also very simple and easy. We all know that the process of general transcription using RNA polymerase enzyme which is a DNA dependent RNA polymerase and that can produce mRNA from DNA via general transcription process. So it's very basic. We don't need to talk much about that. And the example for such virus is our herpes virus, pox virus, adenovirus, papilloma virus. All of them are heavyweight viruses. Herpes virus, pox virus and adenovirus. How to memorize uh, this this name? Because uh, there are a lot of names of viruses that is going that are going to come. Because if you need, if you are majoring in this molecular virology, you need to uh, remember those names. So <coughs> the easiest way to memorize this, uh, we'll begin from the DNA, and we are going towards RNA and reverse transcriptase type for the classification. But to memorize the names, in this case of double stranded DNA, you should memorize HAP or HAP, H-A-P, H for herpes virus, A for adenovirus and P for pox virus. Okay, now among them herpes virus and pox virus they are having enveloped and adenovirus is unenveloped virus. And if you look at the genome size also that herpes virus and pox virus are larger viruses because they are carrying much more amount of genome. Uh, you don't need to memorize the length of the genome or the size of the genome, it is not required. But just know that adenovirus is small unenveloped virus, non-enveloped virus. Herpes virus and pox virus are enveloped and they are pretty larger than adeno and papilloma virus. Okay, <clears throat> so memorize HAP in or HAP in this case. Okay, so let's begin. The second class are single-stranded DNA virus. Remind, <coughs> remind you, I 
told you that we begin with DNA viruses and we are going towards RNA, then the reverse transcriptase type. So first among the DNA type double stranded DNA, the common most common one, then the single stranded DNA viruses, and the single stranded DNA virus must produce mRNA. So how they will produce mRNA? They simply take that one single strand of the DNA and take it as a temp <coughs> template strand and they produce another strand of that DNA. So now as they are producing both the strands, they become double stranded DNA virus. They are no longer single stranded now. They are now double stranded and then this double stranded DNA can easily transcribe mRNA using the general transcription process. <coughs> Now the examples, the examples of such viruses are adeno-associated viruses. Mind you, this type of viruses are also sm small viruses, very very small as you can see, genome size is only 5 kb. They are unenveloped also, but this adeno-associated virus require the presence of adenovirus to complete their life cycle and to spread the infection properly. Okay, so that's an uh, important point about adeno-associated viruses. That's why uh, the name is like adeno-associated because their life cycle is kind of associated with adenoviruses. Okay, so let's move on. This this part of the viruses are not that much important because these are not that much important for causing infections in human beings. Uh, they usually infect uh, <coughs> insects and other things, not human beings that much. So you won't bother about the class 2 viruses for Baltimore. Okay, now the class 3 viruses and here comes the RNA type of viruses and this is the double stranded RNA containing virus. We always provide double strand the higher privilege. So double stranded RNA. So if it is having a double stranded RNA, that means it is having a positive stranded RNA and a negative stranded RNA, both, both of them together. Now if negative strands or positive strands are separated, that positive stranded RNA can readily serve as mRNA to be translated into proteins uh, or it can take that negative strand and can synthesize more positive strands so that those positive strands can be acting as mRNA to translate to proteins. Okay, so this is also basic and the examples for this type is Rio virus and it, they are also non-enveloped non virus and the genome size is kind of moderate 18 to 31 base pairs long. Okay, but these are also, I, I must tell you, these are also very rare kind. Single stranded DNA and double stranded RNA uh, without retro transposition, uh, re retro uh, virus type are pretty less common. They are uh, very, very uncommon type of viruses. We won't bother about them very much. So, Rio virus and those adeno associated virus, we are not that much interested about them. So let's move on to the interested type of viruses and the fourth type of uh, Baltimore classified virus and those are positive stranded RNA virus and these are really really uh, important. This positive stranded RNA virus, what we know that positive strand can readily serve as mRNA to be translated into proteins but it needs to produce its genomic material right because this positive stranded RNA is also the genomic material for the viruses. Now one thing you should also know, one thing also know for the virus perspective that uh, for a virus to produce uh, progeny viruses, it requires two important things. One is uh, the protein molecules to be translated from the mRNA and also the, uh, the genetic material. So in this case, they are having single strand, positive stranded RNA as genetic material and they also need to produce some proteins and that proteins must be produced from translating those positive stranded mRNA. So they need to produce a lot of positive stranded RNA inside the cell prior to release their progeny viruses. So for that reason, in this case from the positive stranded RNA, they take that positive stranded RNA as a template and they will produce single stranded negative stranded RNA and using that negative stranded RNA as a template, they will further produce more and more positive stranded RNA. So it's kind of complementing each other. And then finally, once they produce a lot of positive stranded RNA, then they take some of them as genetic material and then they take some of them as mRNA to produce proteins. And then they package those mRNA into proteins and uh, release those progeny viruses. That's how uh, the positive strand RNA viruses actually work. And the examples now, very important. Uh, Toga virus, polio virus, foot and mouth disease virus, hepatitis A, hepatitis C. So they are really, really uh, <coughs> dangerous and uh, pathogenic viruses for us. So Toga virus, not that important, but polio virus, hepatitis A and, and hepatitis C. So these are important. Okay, so in this case, uh, 
<coughs> how to memorize the structure again I'm telling you P and H in this case the simple uh, example for that polio and hepatitis that's what we need to talk about polio and hepatitis and you can see almost the structure and the length of the genome that they can carry is almost similar same like 7.4 kb for polio virus 7.5 for hepatitis a virus 10.5 for hepatitis c virus now polio and hepatitis a both of them are uh, non enveloped hepatitis c is an enveloped virus we don't need to go through that much de detail but you need to memorize this h and p uh, so hewlett packard <laughs> is not the case in this case hepatitis A and polio virus okay that's how you can memorize it now let's uh, move on to the fifth type and it is also another important type it is a single stranded negative stranded RNA virus so single negative stranded RNA now if you are having single negative stranded RNA you can use this single negative stranded RNA as a template and you can directly produce mRNA using this single stranded RNA as a template now for 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 producing RNA Using RNA as a template, you require again RNA uh, <coughs> polymerase, but this will be RNA dependent RNA polymerase. But using a DNA strand, if you need to produce RNA, you are focusing on DNA dependent RNA polymerase. So keep this thing in your mind. When you are writing the answers, you should be, uh, if, if you are going from DNA to RNA, DNA dependent RNA polymerase. If you are going from RNA to RNA, RNA dependent RNA polymerase is required. And the examples for that is influenza virus, very very common and probably one of the most common type of viruses. Uh, they are obviously enveloped virus, beautiful structures of influenza. I think you all uh, know that, so we don't need to memorize much about that. Class V influenza, class five influenza. That's that's the trademark. You should just print it in your mind always that class five is influenza. No talk about that. Enveloped virus, genome size is 12 to 15 kb, and it's done. Now let's move to uh, <coughs> the class 6 and the class 6 virus are obviously we are shifting now towards the uh, reverse transcriptase type of viruses and these are single stranded RNA reverse transcriptase virus. So we are having a single stranded RNA using that single stranded RNA they will pr produce a DNA single strand using that single stranded RNA as a template and for that to occur from producing DNA strand using RNA as a template we require a different set of uh, transcription enzyme and that that enzyme here is reverse transcriptase the enzyme name is reverse transcriptase or RT so using that enzyme we produce a DNA RNA hybrid now using this DNA RNA hybrid then what we can do that RNA of the DNA RNA hybrid can be chewed out using uh, a nuclease enzyme ribonucleases and then another DNA strand will be prepared using the one single strand remain after the chewing of RNA strand of the DNA RNA hybrid and we can produce a double stranded DNA if I can draw it it will be better but <coughs> so you are having a single RNA you take that you produce a single DNA over it so now you are having a DNA and RNA you degrade that RNA you are having only one DNA now using that you produce another DNA strand so finally you get both of the DNA strands together so once you get both of the DNA strands together then you can take that DNA uh, and, and you can simply uh, transcribe it using DNA dependent RNA polymerase and you can produce mRNA and using that mRNA uh, you can produce the proteins so as simple as that and the examples are HIV one of the most dangerous viruses nowadays human immunodeficiency uh, virus uh, so this is uh, <coughs> the HIV causative agents of AIDS okay and incurable kind of disease now so it's a reverse RNA type of virus HIV obviously it is enveloped the genome size 9.7 kb under 10 kb but it is dangerous it is replicating and it will uh, for this type of virus a very important property once they produce that DNA RNA hybrid or double stranded DNA once they produce this double stranded DNA this double stranded DNA will go and it will be impl implanted it will be inserted inside the genome of the host uh, cell for example if it is infecting human it will go and insert it inside the genome of human being and it will stay there for a longer period of time and then <coughs> uh, once the chromosomes and the genomic expression start to occur the expression of the viral protein also begin okay so that's the process so class 6 HIV virus <coughs> so most common type class 5 influenza class 6 HIV so it's a lot of H is coming in and the final and last classification of the viruses are the seven it is double stranded DNA reverse transcriptase so you know 
So in the in case of this HIV, we we've started with single stranded RNA. We go through several stages to produce the double stranded DNA. But in case of this <coughs> class seven viruses, we start with this double stranded DNA reverse transcriptase. So they will get only uh, uh, this double stranded DNA. They will incorporate it. They can use reverse transcriptase enzyme to produce <coughs> this double stranded, and and they can just insert it into the host genome, and then they can. Uh, transcribe it they can translate it into protein products so here we can see the example hepatitis b virus genome size is pretty less 3.1 kb very small envelope obviously there is envelope so all of the reverse transcriptase type of viruses must have their envelopes that's a, a hard and fast rule and the class 5 6 and 7 all of them are enveloped type of viruses uh, in this case this is double stranded DNA reverse transcriptase but all of them are enveloped and they are dangerous too. So class 5 influenza very common, class 7 HIV also common and dangerous, class uh, class 6 uh, sorry and class 7 is a hepatitis V it's also dangerous. Okay so this in a sense the Baltimore classification of viruses remind you to memorize all this you need to know the central dogma of biology you need to know how RNA is produced from DNA and how proteins are produced from RNA and once you are having positive strand RNA or negative strand RNA you need to think finally you need to produce mRNA once you produce the mRNA bingo you can produce protein so that's the thing in this picture we have already talked about once you produce mRNA that's done we can see most of the viruses get the direct production of mRNA but only this three type class 2 class 4 and class 6 are producing mRNA using one and two step intern machineries that are required for them okay so that's kind of it and i hope that's helpful thank you